Hello and welcome everyone to today's webinar, Five Steps to a Modern Data Warehouse for Big Data Analytics. Uh, very pleased to be joined here with our, our value partner, Attunity. And I'm going to cover a few housekeeping items before we announce the speakers and, and go on to the agenda. Um, this webinar will be recorded, and I know that's one of our most popular questions, um, and will be made available um, within the next week or so. All right. Um, okay. And our speakers for today, uh, also just one quick thing, uh, we also will have our question and answers at the end of the webinar, so please submit those throughout the webinar and we'll answer as many as we can. Those that we don't, aren't able to answer, we'll, we'll answer offline, okay? So uh, moving forward, if, um, Itamar, if you wouldn't mind forwarding my slides, I'm, I'm having a problem with my connection, but I can follow it offline, I'd appreciate that. But we want to do some quick, uh, Quick uh, introductions here. My name is Jeff Healy. I'm the Director of Product Marketing for the HV Product Analytics Platform. And um, as I mentioned, I'm very pleased to be joined here by Itamar Ankaron, who heads up uh, business development for uh, Attunity. So, sorry guys, I'm uh, having a problem with my connection right now. Uh, Itamar, thanks for joining. Uh, th uh, thank you, Jeff. It's uh, great to be here. Um, thank you. You got it. All right. So just bringing up my slides now while we're working through just a few uh, few issues with my connection, and then we'll just get it moving. Uh, Imar, please just, I'll just say forward the slides until I get my connection back up. But anyway, let's just get started. We're on, we're on the third slide now. So as we mentioned, five steps to a modern data warehouse for big data analytics. Um, you know, Imar and I worked pretty closely on this. We wanted to make sure that we had a um, you know, compelling title and also a, a kind of a five-step process for anyone out there who has an existing data warehouse, and I'm sure there's many organizations out there but you know, aren't getting what they need out of it. They're not deriving enough uh, business value from that. So one of the top things that we hear from all these organizations is that they want to store more data more cost effectively. Right? They're, they're, they're putting a lot more hardware at their existing infrastructure, yet they're not getting the benefit, and it's also increasing their costs. Uh, being able to load more data with fewer resources, and that's faster than traditional ETL, a lot of the ETL tools out there. And Hidemar is going to talk a little bit about ETL and, and how Attunity can help address uh, some portion of that. Uh, analyzing more data many times faster than traditional enterprise data warehouses. So, um, you know, we have customers in the petabyte range. So there, this is really big data as far as um, the variety and the velocity and the volume that's coming through. And uh, they just can't accomplish what they're trying to analyze with traditional uh, enterprise data warehouses. They want a more modern platform uh, to streamline uh, business intelligence and analytics. We understand there's an entire stack out there. You know, we're, our, our value proposition isn't to go into organizations and say you need to replace everything. Uh, it's very much a, a complementary approach, so your, your organizations want to get more value out of your data. We can do that for you. And then finally, you know, complement your existing process to improve cost and performance. All right, I'm, I'm connected now. Um, okay, so now what I'm going to do is provide a little bit of an overview for HP Vertica. I'm going to pass it off to Itamar. He'll cover Attunity. And then we have a demo, uh, a really great demo that will have both our technical counterparts, Miles Collins from HP Vertica, as well as Hein Vanderhoogle uh, from Attunity, that we're going to provide that. Then we'll bring it back around, uh, do a quick wrap, wrap up, and then do a question and answer. Okay, so um, I'm sure there's no surprise, right, as far as all the organizations that are on the phone, um, on the call around big data. So what always amazes me is, you know, 10 years ago or, you know, 15 years ago, I, I worked for a, uh, another database company right out of college. And at the time, the rage was data warehousing and the amount of massive amounts of data that were available. But there wasn't any Facebook, social media wasn't there, instant messaging, um, Google wasn't even born. So these data warehouse vendors that were trying to prepare and anticipate the amount of data that was going to be coming their way, uh, they couldn't possibly do it because all these different forms and companies weren't even invented by that time. And then you add on to that this growing internet of things, which is a space that um, I spend quite a bit of time in, and I'll tell you that nearly everything is becoming connected, from cars to buildings um, to meters to um, you name it, medical equipment, ATMs across the board. And what's, what's happening is there's just a massive amount of data that's being generated from all these things out there. And, you know, as the business cases evolve and you see more machine-to-machine -machine Internet of Things cases like smart metering and usage-based insurance and, um, you know, more end-to-end -end Internet of Things use cases there, you'll just see more and more of these things becoming connected. And as these things become connected, we're getting more and more data being generated and organizations 
really need to take a new approach or a complementary approach to be able to manage the amount of data that's coming through. And there, there's absolutely value within that data as well. So what we see is the opportunity is a limitless. Um, I speak to a lot of prospects and customers, and they say, you know, how do you, how does um, Atrivertic and Attunity um, help a healthcare organization, or how do they help a telecommunications company? Well, the great thing about the technologies are is that they are a horizontal approach. So really anyone with big data and a business case for trying to derive insight from that data uh, can do it with us. So it's, it's any industry that's on the phone right now. Um, if you have an answer you're trying to get from your business and you think that there's some sort of value in the data that you're collecting from clickstream data to you call detail records within telecommunications, there's absolutely uh, there's benefit in doing that. So here's just some quick uh, highlights just from the U.S. healthcare sector, you know, the amount of money and saved expenditures, uh, the telecommunications providers obviously very much interested in connecting all of these things because um, you know, they can provide value-added services. Uh, also within uh, personal location data and um, telecommunications and machine-to-machine -machine on its own, the, the cost of connecting all these things out there is going down because the carriers are very much involved in making sure that there's data going over their networks and they're providing more value-added services for things like, again, uh, fleet management, use of fish insurance, and the like. So really a lot of opportunities out there. I hear more and more use cases every single day on the potential of big data and how they can extract the value from that. So why don't organizations just stay the course and say, you know what, I've got enough technology. I've got databases. I've got... Uh, data warehouses. I can I can transform the data in a way that I can read it. Well, what we're seeing from all these organizations that are adopting um, Vertica and Attunity technologies is that they have to compromise, and um, you know, there, there's no need for making any more of these typical compromises. And that's infrastructure that becomes unaffordable at scale. So again, you know, a data warehouse that was built you know 20 years ago for a different purpose, they have to add more hardware, more infrastructure, more people or administrators, and it becomes unaffordable at scale. Um, analytics power that's only accessible to a few, right? So it may be a situation where you have some sort of a proprietary technology where um, you know, a typical database administrator is the only person that can manage the data or you know, work with some developers to get some value out of it, but it's not that insight is not available across the organization. So what's happening is organizations are making a trade-off. They're making a trade-off between the quality of insight and the speed of decisions. So the speed of decisions, I'm going to provide some examples of how important it is in certain industries when you get that answer back within a second instead of an hour or a day instead of a week, um, seeing more and more organizations where it's becoming mission critical. And data insights are really are becoming that competitive differentiator. We have many customers, uh, hundreds of customers, and many of them um, you know, won't participate in webinars or case studies and, and what have you because they view Big data analytics is a competitive differentiator, and they don't want their competition to find out about what they're doing. Um, some really amazing stories from everything from online gaming with companies like Game Show Network where they're doing live product development. They are literally creating features in their products and their games, rolling them out, and taking in all the clickstream data from everywhere around the world of all the gamers. And based on you know, whether or not they're enjoying the game and coming back for more or potential to um, churn, they roll back the changes. That's how fast this happens. To um, companies like Gas, which in within retail, both within brick and mortar, and then also on their their e-commerce sites, um, what they are able to do is, um, from an online e-commerce perspective, is really offer personalized one-on-one -on -one offers. So you come to the site, they can understand enough about your behavior, um, or what you're interested in, and really be able to do the upsells with you. And then more on the brick-and-mortar side, what they're able to do is generate daily store reports um, that are delivered via an iPad to uh, the franchisee. So when they open their stores, they know exactly how much inventory they have. They know what the top sellers are. Uh, they know how to reconfigure and, and, and promote certain offerings within their store in driving more revenue. And then finally, just a third example to show the broad applicability across industries is Cerner within healthcare. Um, they're doing some really amazing things. Um, really doing a lot of predictive animal analytics to course correct patient treatment. So to understand, you know, patient got this type of treatment and they returned in a, in a couple of weeks. What could they have done better? What type of um, you know, family history do they have? 
uh, what type of behavior, what type of uh, exercise they do. They're analyzing all types of uh, data to be able to deliver better patient care uh, by working with hospitals and, and clinicians. So what we see is the time is now. I mean, I've been in high tech for some time, and I've never seen um, the demand, you know, for big data analytics and companies that are all talking about it and trying to put their strategy together to say, um, how am I going to get value? One, how am I going to store and manage this massive amounts of data? You know, and, and some of the reasons is for uh, regulations and compliance and what have you, or information governance. But um, how am I going to get value out of the data? How do we know that there's value? So how much time do I want to spend in structuring the data in the way that I can analyze it to determine if there's value? Um, so there's traditional enterprise data that I mentioned from, I'm sure, many organizations that have it typically stored within a CRM ERP data warehouse. To, um, we're seeing more as a big data within the last 10 years or so, web, you know, click streams, social media sentiment, log files, sensor data, uh, semi-structured, you name it, all different types. And then also underneath here we call something called dark data, and that's pockets of data within an organization where you know, no one's really maintaining it, but that could be you know, the kind of the piece of the missing puzzle to determine, get a full 360 view on your customers and how to behave uh, are they going to churn? You know, what types of offers can you provide them? So organizations are really taking this holistic approach, but they need uh, really need a proven platform to do that. So we say to all of the our organizations we talk to is don't accept compromises. There's no need anymore. Uh, companies like Facebook that we announced um, you know, last December, uh, they use a full stack. They used to dupe in all different types of technologies to make sure that they can maintain their competitive edge. I mean, they're, they're storing, managing, and analyzing petabytes of information uh, to, to keep that edge. Uh, they were taking in massive amounts of clickstream data, marrying that with uh, advertising revenues to really understand how they can, can move the needle on that front. So we say no compromise in, in scale, speed, or simplicity. We, we hear that across the board. It's important for uh, all these organizations. So what do we mean by scale? It's... Um, really any form of data. So we call it multi-structured data, but anything from completely unstructured and something that you would you would typically uh, load into a dupe. The semi-structured data, we're doing some sort of analysis, let's say on uh, clickstream data or log data. So fully structured data is something that you'd find, um, you know, in a CRM uh, or ERP system or data warehouse. And um, from terabytes to petabytes to exabytes, you know, just unlimited amount of scale. <clears throat> um, it's just going to continue to grow and grow with the highest performance. And the affordable costs, and obviously that's a, that's a big driver there as far as um, having a lower total cost of ownership by making sure that you can run on optimized hardware um, and, and completely open. And as far as speed, um, if you speak to any of our customers that are here and in the stories, speed is the one thing that they talk about all the time. Um, we hear our customers say, you know, our, our queries, you know, wouldn't complete or it would take a day and they came back in a second, and we thought our queries were broken. So blazing fast speed to be able to get that insight from all the data. It's uh, uh, it's pretty legendary as far as for the HP Vertic Analytics platform. Um, and, and really, w with that speed, what you're able to do is um, you know derive maximum insight from all that data. So we hear a lot of organizations that say, um, you know, all the counterparts, the internal constituents like marketing and support and sales would come down and say, hey, um, you know, I need a report on uh, campaign effectiveness, and I know we just switched uh, websites. Can you get me that um, in a week? And what we'll find is data scientists, the data analysts working with these uh, collective technologies will say, why don't I show you right now? And they're blown away. They visualize the data, and they're providing these visualization uh, dashboards to everyone within the organization. And now they're saying, if I have that type of information, what else can I learn about my business? So it's a major driver within organizations now. Then finally, around simplicity, um, you know, our GM of the division always talks about Disco with uh, HP Vertica, and that's download, install, set up, and go. You can get set up within an hour. So you talk about simplicity. Our engineers are always working around <laughs> making it easier to tackle really complex problems in a more simple way and get up and running um, uh, very, very quickly. The other part of the openness message, obviously, we have a tuning on the line. I'm just about to uh, pass it off to Inamar, but... It's very important for us to take an open approach because we understand you don't want to be locked into one vendor. Uh, we're seeing that right now with some other organizations or some other vendors where you know, the organizations are getting tired of being held hostage 
you know, by one vendor, by being able to buy everything from them, and then at the end of the day, when they go to renew, it costs them millions and millions of dollars. It's not the way it's going to be going. There's going to be a collection of technologies. We want to make sure that you choose the best data visualization. We want to integrate with them. We want to work, um, you know, using all open standards so that you have the best best group of technologies for everything from Hadoop to R for statistical programming and the like, and obviously with uh, Attunity and, and a lot of our other great partners. Okay, so I, I just provided a quick overview on HP Vertica, but then it really was purpose-built for big data from the very first line of code. That's the major difference when we get questions as far as saying, well, I have a data warehouse. You guys have a data warehouse. Why, you know, where do you guys differentiate? And, um, you know, the product, we're, we're in version 7 now, but from the very first line of code, Dr. Michael Stonebreaker had in mind big data and the amount of volume riding and the speed at which you wanted to get the answers back. So um, it, was, it wasn't a retrofitted platform. It was completely built for that purpose. So I touched on the speed, the scale, the openness, and then finally um, the optimized data storage. So what we'll see is take telecommunications, for example. Uh, they'll take a, a petabyte of data, put it in Vertica, and it will be compressed down to 500 terabytes without doing a lot of tuning. So right off the bat, um, you see an advantage by just simply loading it um, into Vertica. And then flexible deployment, um, we won't force you to, to purchase an appliance, although we, we have one and it's, it's got great appeal. Um, also cloud, so if you want to you want to deploy in a private or public cloud, or if you want to go software only on on-premise basis, we're open there. Uh, so it's about providing choice to our customer base. Finally, I've got two slides before I pass it off to Itamar, and that's um, HV Vertica Flex Zone, which is a core part of HV Vertica that we announced um, in December as part of Crane, our Crane release, HV Vertica 7. I showed you a slide around all the different types of data types and um, organizations that are trying to figure out for semi-structured data, take uh, log files or sensor data. You know, organizations aren't sure whether or not they want to be able to spend a lot of time in you know, adding schemas and structuring that data to be led by Vertica. And you could do that in the past, but it took some time. So what we did was we made it super easy to explore that multi-structured data with FlexZone. And there's something, something called auto-schematization. So you can take that data in very quickly, a lot of different data types, and start exploring that data within your favorite uh, visualization environment, Tableau, MicroStrategy, ClickTech, or what have you. And once you determine there's, there's value in that data to complete your analytical queries, Within one step, you can promote that within uh, HP Vertica uh, with minimal effort, and you can get 10x to 100x that performance improvement. So think about exploring that multi-structured data and then running the blazing fast analytics against it to meet all your analytical queries. So this is a very hot product as part of uh, HP Vertica 7. And we've got a lot of um, a lot of interest there. Okay, and um, so as I mentioned, there's a lot of use cases, right? I mean, we've got a growing customer base and a lot of growing joint customers with Attunity. Itamar is going to hit on one uh, in this presentation, but I've seen all kinds of use cases from, you know, uh, fraud monitoring to financial tracking to clickstream analytics. Um, I hear more and more each day. Um, so uh, anyone out there on the line that's considering, uh, you know, big data, what to do with it, how to get started, um, I think we've got a, a great solution for you there. And, and hopefully you guys have some questions for us and we can talk about it. Okay, so that's about 20 minutes. I want to now pass it off to Itamar, who's going to cover Attunity, and then he'll pass it off to the demo, and we'll cover the Q&A. Itamar, why don't you take it from here? Thank you very much, uh, Jeff. And uh, thanks uh, to everyone who's been joined us today to uh, learn about uh, how you can build a modern uh, platform, use modern technologies and approaches to uh, be able to scale and increase speed and simplicity while uh, lowering the cost as you want to build a big data analytics platform. Uh, so thanks for that, uh, Jeff. And as, as Jeff walked you through, Vertica provides a lot of innovations, a lot of modern approaches and technologies that can help you to store and analyze the data. And uh, where Attunity comes in is that we can provide you modern ways to move the data that will then uh, move your business. So modern ways that allow you to scale in respect to the uh, the type of data, the uh, number of uh, uh, data sources and data loading processes that you need to put in place, scale to deal with uh, uh, large, large volumes of data, as well as deal with the speed when you need to uh, uh, move a lot of data at very high speed, and then achieve simplicity in the process of loading data. So building a modern way 
for getting your data uh, into your big data analytics platform and leveraging a modern approach for uh, benefiting from analytics. So we're going to be talking about accelerated data loading. And uh, with that, uh, I'll quickly introduce Attunity. Attunity is a, a provider of a leading provider of data uh, integration, data loading uh, technology. We help our customers, we help our partners to move the data that moves their business so they can enable competitive intelligence, so they can enable to improve the efficiency of the operations, so they can improve their customer uh, service. Uh, we're a global provider. We, have, uh, we work uh, across the world with uh, lots of customers in the different regions of the world, and uh, we provide different software that can help you move the data, whether it's structured data or whether it's unstructured data. Our focus today will be around our data loading and replication software with CDC capabilities that can help you feed data into HP Vertica, and you can learn more about other opportunity uh, products that can help you to collect uh, machine, uh, machine, da machine data or log information, as well as move data to the cloud uh, on the Attunity website. Today, in the next slides, we'll focus on how we can help you feed structured data into uh, Vertica. Attunity has worked for over 20 years uh, with some of the world's largest organizations. We have over 2,000 customers that leverage uh, our software across many different industries. Uh, very much like Vertica, we are horizontal. We have uh, our products uh, help organizations across different uh, types of verticals, from financial services to manufacturing, healthcare, uh, telecommunications, and other types of organizations. Our customers typically have a lot of data stored in a lot of different uh, data sources, ranging across a wide range of uh, databases and data sources. And uh, with our technology, they can facilitate the process of loading that data. So the focus today is about delivering data for big data analytics. And one of the things we're seeing is customers want to build modern uh, environments for processing and analyzing the data is that, first of all, they need, they're looking at a much broader set of data, and then they're also looking at different, wa different ways to store the data for analytics. So as you can see in the slide here, on the left you have different uh, types of data. The data can come from your traditional ERP, CRM, uh, retail applications, condom management systems, HR systems. It can also come from uh, web logs and other types of sensor and other types of uh, um, um, uh, telemetry and other systems that generate uh, machine data. And then in terms of processing the data, you may have traditionally used a data warehouse. You may be concerned that data, about that data warehouse's ability to handle um, the new volumes of data in a uh, cost-optimized manner. But you, so, but you may need to use a data warehouse in respect to how you analyze the data. You may need to bring it into uh, reporting, high-speed reporting and analytics engine. You may want to bring it into a Hadoop, or you may want to do all of that in the cloud. So you have different requirements as you look at the modern platform for big data analytics, and you may need to move different types of data into different types of locations. And that's what our focus is all about. It's about providing a flexible product, flexible technology, that can enable uh, you to move more data faster with less resources compared to traditional technologies that may not have been optimized for this new world of um, uh, analytics. So with Attunity, you can move any data anytime, anywhere. We'll go through it. And the whole idea is to provide you high performance as you move the data at a lower total cost of uh, ownership and with a quick time to value compared to traditional approaches. So when we look at modern data loading for big data analytics, this slide helps you see how Attunity and Vertica fit in. So when you look at the complete platform, uh, traditionally on the left you'd have sources, uh, for example, your transactional or LTP sources. You would view as an ETL uh, uh, product or technology, or maybe you've written your own ETL scripts to put the data into an EDW. So that's an enterprise data warehouse. And that has been the traditional way of doing things typically uh, pretty uh, resource-intensive uh, uh, and cost-intensive. Uh, where Vertica comes in is in enabling very high-speed analytics on your data, as Jeff has, uh, has outlined, and those can either be for, your, for a new project that you're trying to put in place, so you can use Vertica to provide that, or it can help you also in, in complementing an existing uh, enterprise data worst environment where certain workloads can run faster, for example, or more cost effectively within, uh, uh, within Vertica. Where activity comes in, 
is enabling, giving you a more modern approach to load more data with less resources uh, into Vertica, or to complement an existing EDW to improve cost performance by helping you move the data or uh, replicate data from your EDW, or, which you may continue to use for collecting the data, and putting the relevant data into Vertica so you can benefit from the cost efficiencies that the Vertica platform provides. And then on top of all of that, you can, of course, generate insight from the analytics with your uh, traditional or new types of visualization, data analytics, and reporting uh, tools. So with the tool, you can accelerate the process of loading the data, uh, either replacing or complementing uh, traditional ETL technologies. So when we look at the use cases that uh, we're seeing today with customers who want to load data uh, in a modern approach, we're seeing a few. Uh, first of all, is ELT. So traditionally, customers were doing a lot of ETL over uh, when it extracting the data, transforming it outside of the data warehouse, and then loading it at the end. Uh, today, we're seeing uh, ELT being, a more uh, being used more and more commonly, uh, meaning you extract, you load the data into your uh, data warehouse or analytic platform, uh, such as Vertica, and then if you, if you need to do any transformations, you do them inside uh, the data warehouse, leveraging its high-scale and high-performance capabilities. So that's one key use case that Attunity enables, and we'll talk soon about how Attunity enables you to do that with significantly less resources and faster time to value. The other use case is CDC, and, or Change Data Capture. So that talks about the ability to load data in real time, uh, while CDC is also used in an ELT context, many customers look at CDC or define CDC, use that term when they um, uh, talk about real-time load, low latency load. So while earlier Jeff talked about speed as a key part of a modern platform, uh, he was uh, focusing on the speed of analytics. When you actually run a query, how quickly can you get a result, slicing potentially through millions and billions of uh, records. Uh, when we are talking about speed, we're talking about uh, the speed or the low latency in which you get the data. So if you have analytics that require very low latency of data, that's what CDC enables you to do, to trickle feed or to load data in a way that achieves very low latency. The additional use case is EDW offload. Again, you may already have an existing traditional enterprise data warehouse. You may continue to use it, but you'd like to complement it with another platform that can uh, provide high performance for certain workloads, and then you have a use case of loading data from your traditional uh, EDW into uh, Vertica, which can be one-time, scheduled, or an ongoing uh, process. If you choose to completely migrate your data warehouse, then you have a different use case with a data warehouse migration. And then finally, you may have a use case where your data warehouse is in the cloud. You may use Vertica, for example, in the HP cloud, or in hosted environment, or in your, or some other uh, uh, place where you need, where your source data and Vertica happen to be in different data centers, in which case you may need to move data efficiently over a wide area network on the Internet, which is a whole different uh, type of use case. With Attunity, you can facilitate all of these use cases with a significant acceleration of time, less resources, uh, and considerably less cost compared to uh, traditional uh, approaches. When you look at the reasons why traditional technologies uh, create challenges, is primarily around cost performance of traditional uh, ETL uh, technologies. And our, most of our customers refer to this as a, a type of bottleneck. Uh, so we refer to it as the big data bottleneck. And what causes the bottleneck is a combination of both process challenges and performance or data transfer challenges. And we see, we see many customers run into some or many of these issues uh, in the traditional uh, platform. So, for example, when we talk about process challenges, the three most common ones is that setting up a new feed into the data warehouse takes too long. Now, in the past, when you may have had few feeds, that may not have been a critical issue. But as you grow to scale and you have growing demands to load more and more data feeds into your data warehouse, the time it takes you to put every feed in place is very significant. So we, many of our customers we talk to, they see uh, that with the traditional ETL, it takes them many months to put together a, a data loading process, and they want us to significantly reduce their time. Uh, the cost associated with licensing and also with the implementation of traditional ETL pro products is uh, significant. Again, uh, creating a barrier for loading more data. 
and then the dependency on developers. Traditional ETL products are basically developer products. They require developer skill sets, which are always a bottleneck. There's never enough of them. And therefore, when more projects, new projects come, uh, come about, they have to wait for developers to be available. As you'll see soon, Attunity, Attunity goes around that by, create, by providing a solution that does not require a developer skill set and can be easily used by any DBA to put data uh, directly into your data warehouse. On the performance side, the key challenges are the achieving low latency in real time with traditional ETL, and that has to do with the inherent efficiencies of ETL compared to uh, uh, CDC and unique optimization technologies that we'll hear about. Uh, overhead that they generate on your system, so loading the data may have too much impact on your environment, or being able to handle volumes, whether you're working inside your LAN or your WAN uh, environment. So these are the typical challenges uh, of traditional ETL that Attunity uh, commonly addresses with customers. So how do we do it? With the Attunity click to load solution for HP Vertica, uh, it's based on the Attunity Replicate product, which provides optimized and automated data loading solution. It is it's, a, it's a significantly easier solution that requires no coding at all. No, there's no complexity. It dramatically reduces the complexity of ETL. Uh, it's pre-automated, providing an optimized process end-to-end -end for taking the E, the L, part of the T that you may have traditionally done and providing that with a click of a button versus the complex process of an ETL product. Uh, it provides a lot of uh, high-performance optimizations to deliver integration and loading into Vertica. It provides real-time CDC with low overhead, as well as optimi specific optimization for moving large volumes of data uh, in LAN and WAN. For example, uh, we have customers that uh, uh, have looked at using traditional ETL tools, uh, estimating it will take them three months or longer uh, to move uh, um, one example, for example, about 35 terabytes of data uh, and with Attunity, it took them five days. Now, it took them five days to both put the solution together as well as run it. So that's, a, that's the type of difference we refer to, both in speeding up the process as well as speeding up the performance. So the whole idea of Attunity is that we have to get more data in less time and less cost. A another product for you to consider as you look at uh, building a modern environment for moving data so you can ha handle, handle more data in less time. An example... Um, one example is a large department store chain that uh, Trinity and Vertica worked on together. They had a, uh, a data warehouse that they've used for years before, uh, and they had a challenge of performance uh, and speed both with the um, running analytics as well as the process of loading data. The process of loading data, they had latency of hours in, work, in getting the data there. Uh, it also took them a lot of time to make any changes to such a process. And then running analytics was too, took too long, uh, so they couldn't support their uh, business development and marketing uh, requirements. So they wanted a high-performance solution to get uh, query results very, very quickly to support business analytics for, for business development and marketing. Uh, and the solution was based on Vertica and the opportunity click-to-load solution for Vertica. And again, as a result, they're able to, create, to have a cost-optimized platform to support the big, the big data analytics to improve analytics, uh, leveraging reduced latency, the data that was updated uh, in uh, very few uh, minutes, and then enjoy ease of use and performance as well as the automation in such a platform. So a few highlights of the Attunity uh, uh, click-to-load solution. First of all, it provides a complete uh, heterogeneous data loading uh, solution for Vertica. So what it means by this, this is all about automation. So instead of a development platform like traditional ETL, Attunity is an automation platform for data loading. It can be used by any DBA. It provides a click-to-load environment where it is very, uh, you can enjoy a simplified uh, process where you can configure and run an entire uh, data loading process that will automate everything from generating your schemas inside Vertica to doing an initial full load to automatically uh, changing into incremental continuous uh, load process with change data capture, and all of that is completely automated for you uh, with a click uh, of a button. And you'll see that in the demo that Hein will show shortly. Uh, other advantages include uh, the ability to reduce impact on your environment with um, an approach that we call zero footprint architecture that reduces the need to install um, agents on your store systems. So for the most common database uh, uh, sources like Oracle, SQL Server, uh, DB2, Sybase, MySQL, for all of those, Attunity can work without 
any agent installed in the source database, which speeds up implementations, reduces overhead, and total cost of ownership. Beyond that, Trinity provides high performance optimization for loading data with a unique technology called TurboStream uh, CDC. Uh, we use very unique optimizations to load Vertica, and um, uh, both in respect to the API used as well as how data is streamed from the source all the way to the target, which is designed and optimized specifically for loading uh, a data warehouse uh, or a columnar database uh, data warehouse like, uh, like Vertica. In addition, Trinity provides monitoring and control. Uh, for many of our customers, the data loading process uh, is part of their ongoing operations. They need to know its runs. They need to know the performance. They need to control it without starting to go to other tools and figuring out uh, what, what happens or if something goes wrong. Attunity provides a full-fledged monitoring and control solution integrated into the Attunity uh, Replicate product, which you'll also see in the demo. So at a very high level, uh, the, the architecture of Attunity is based on a server that you can run on Windows or Linux. The server can run one or multiple, of course, uh, many uh, uh, loading tasks. A task can be configured to your source and to your target, in this case, HP Vertica. All the loading processes will be optimized in this case when you work with Vertica, leveraging Vertica uh, high-speed integration. Um, inside the Attunity product, you can define transformations. You can define filtering. You can define global transformations, all of those using rules without any coding uh, to develop the, lo the logic. And we support a wide range of sources, as you can see uh, on the left, ranging from Oracle, SQL Server, DB2s, Sybase, MySQL, uh, to legacy platforms like HP Nonstop, Mainframe, as well as uh, getting data from other data uh, warehouses. So that's a high-level overview of the uh, architecture. Uh, and everything in the Trinity uh, Replicate is managed and configured through a web-based console, which you will also see in the demo. So at the high level, uh, this slide shows you the optimized performance uh, using uh, TurboStream CDC. We leverage both in-memory stream processing when you work inside your LAN environment, or we can either uh, move data on a transactional basis or do high-volume CDC where we will do a unique type of batching and compression that will uh, condense the amount of operations of the data warehouse and leverage unique approaches for loading the data and applying them inside the data warehouse to achieve higher degrees of throughput in incrementally and continually loading data to the data warehouse. Uh, from a user experience perspective, we provide an optimized uh, and automated solution. So again, dramatically uh, easier to use compared to traditional development environments. The demo that you'll see will show you that more than I can show here in slides. So again, designed for a click-to-load approach, uh, very easy to set up, very easy to manage uh, inside uh, web UI, and you'll, you'll see that. So to quickly summarize, with Attunity, uh, as a complement to your environment uh, for data warehousing and Vertica, you can benefit from high-performance approach for loading the data, high volumes, low latency, low impact. It's heterogeneous, so you can support with one, one technology many type of source databases from which you need to source data. You can benefit from fast time to value, leveraging the automation that's built in. So you can, with this approach, this modern approach, you can automate, um, you know, think about automating wherever you can and developing only when you must. Uh, again, all the, all, then your technology can reduce the impact on IT and reduce your total cost. So with that, I think it's better to actually see these products in action, and we'll turn this over to a demo. Uh, we'll start with a demo that shows how we, uh, how we load uh, data following by analyzing it. You'll see a demo around air traffic data. So we're going to start with Hein demonstrating how we load the data, and then uh, uh, we'll see uh, Miles um, use much broader set of data uh, with historical data to show the analysis. So over to you, Hein. Thank you, Edmar, for the introduction. Um, uh, you're looking at my uh, console here where I connect to my Replicate server, which is all running on my laptop. So I have a laptop running an Oracle data source and the Vertica target in the, VMs, in the uh, VMware uh, instance, and I'm running Replicate on the same box. And the console is pointing to that box. Our, our business is organized as tasks that move data from source to target. So it's critical that we define uh, databases as sources and targets. So we would have a, a GUI interface to add a database. And we would set up a database, let's say, it doesn't matter what name it has now. We have lots of sources to pick from. Let's pick an, uh, an Oracle source and provide the usual the connection string, username, password, and we can test the access works 
find there. That's your basics. You don't necessarily have to do any more. If you choose to, you can go behind the scenes and do, do an advanced setup and, and define, do you want to use LogMiner? Do you want to use ASM to read the, the changes? Do you want to use uh, direct file access? Anything is possible. That was the source. Uh, on the target side, we can define a bunch of targets. As you can see, Enscribe, file, uh, file chain, DB2, ODBC, Oracle targets. Uh, and vertical targets. Oh, I'm still looking at the source. I'm my bad. On the targets, we have a whole different uh, range: uh, Amazon Redshift, Greenplum, MySQL, and Vertica. So I've already defined my databases. In this case, I'm going to use a Vertica target, and the Vertica target is just the, in the usual local local server 5433 the default port, DB admin, VMart database. That's all we need to know. And let's create a task to move data from Oracle to Vertica. So Hit the new task button, give it a name, demo, have some choices. I can do a full load, a full load only, I can do a fly changes or not apply changes, or I could use a store changes for later processing. We're going to choose the apply changes. Um, so this is, is the, the high level uh, of our task. So the task has to move data from a source to a target. Let's pick a source, a normal source, Let's pick a target, predefined vertical target, and drag it in there, Cl double click on it, however you like to do it. <coughs> so, excuse me. So, so vertical, well, oh, sorry, replicate will provide the gears between moving the data from Oracle to vertical. So we're, we're, we're almost there. We still have to pick which tables to move, right? So that, uh, I have lots of schemas in the source database. And one of the schemas I'm going to pick here for this database is, as it might indicate, the flight database. That's that's data that comes from from a government uh, website called RITA, where there's years and years of, of flight data available in lots of tables. And I can show all those tables. I can select by by, by uh, matching characters or anything like that. Um, what I'll do is I'll, I'll select. I'll use a wildcard for the selection and tell it to include everything from the flight tables. It's like 12 tables only right now. That actually has a, um, a very, that seems like it's almost the same, but it's not. This is dynamic. If any table were to be added later to this schema, that that table will will start being replicated, will start being changed, data captured, and everything fully automated, no coding needed. So it's a big difference between manually selecting explicit tables and just using all of them or, or an appropriate wildcard. That really should be all there is to it, right? You point it to the source, you point it to a target, you identify the tables, let's run. Simplify. About to run this task for the first time. Do you want to continue? Yep. There we go. So we will be creating in the background the tables on the on the vertical target. You can pre pre create those tables. The tables will be queued up to be moved. Go to loading and I selected the default of five loading tables at the same time and we'll move into a completed stage. So all my little tables are now are now moved. Um loading one more larger table. Uh, and can and what I'll do just imagine stuff was changing on that table. So I'll use a side window to insert a bunch of records in that table as we go forward. Uh, and then we should see that in the in the change processing window we should uh, see incoming transactions momentarily and in the full load table we should see let me split back and they're not quite there yet. There's there's a thousand cache changes that should be applied once this table is fully moved over. Right? see that. I have all sorts of monitors uh, as I go forward. What is my, my current throughput in records per second or in kilobytes per second as I see fit. Uh, the loading table I showed, the completed table, the, uh, the the total overview and how far I'm done. Let's go to the change processing and let's do a change. Let's, I'm using a, let me move in a window. There we go. The change processing is not just data. No, it can also be metadata. So if I take a table, and uh, now you, you see the screen, I hope, right? I'm, I'm going to add a column to that table. So add, oops, add, add a column to this table. Why is I may not? There we go. Table altered, and we should see a DDL change come in. Now that I have the table added, see there's a DDL change that came in, and I'll, I'll 
update those columns with a couple of values, and I'll commit that change. So the, you'll see that those 50 rows uh, moved, uh, updated, they'll, or less than the 49 rows updated, will come in in the change tables in one transaction, which now is going to be committed to the database. So they will be there, and I can undo my Oops, and I can undo my column for the next demo, so to speak. Let's remove that column, and they're all done. Let's do a couple of manual inserts. We'll see those come in. I have This is a total artificial insert, of course. There's a month table in this application that maps months to names, and so if I, I could have a, a French or a Dutch uh, element there, they would come in, and I can then commit that change, and I can clean it up for next time. All right. So here we see uh, several actions being happening are now, now shown on the screen. I can sort them any which way. I'd like to show it by total applied, so the most changes have happened to the on-time database. Stick in the background, stick some more data in there. Another thousand coming in. I made my uh, updates to the airport table. I made DDL changes to the airport table. I did inserts and, and deletes from the... Uh, from the month table. Did I not commit my deletes? Probably not. Let me go back to my SQL plus window and do the commit. So that was still sitting out here. There we go. So that was the incoming changes. They were still held in memory, uh, waiting for a target for a source commit initially, and I'm waiting for a target commit. Everything is happy, everything is working. Uh, I can show a, a throughput graph as we're going forward in in time, and I can see the uh, applied latency in time uh, in, in in seconds. So we we are aiming for near real time performance. Uh, that's really a long and short of it. Define your source, define your target, select some tables, hit go. No program, nothing. Of course, we can go in and say in that design, let's open up. And I'm not going to really do that now, but. I can uh, I can say I have some control tables that I want to visualize, like a history or status or, or any exceptions that might have happened. I can, I can tune my full load and my full load settings. I can choose whether, notably for like a, a, a target like Vertica or PDW, you may want to especially pre-create your table and say, just don't don't create this table for me. I've already created it. Just use it. So we have a bunch of options there with logging, error handling, change processing. Ready for you to need if you need it, but for for your basic uh, basic steps, nothing is needed. Point, click, go, all done. That's it, all done. Back to the next presenter. Hey Miles, you want to show your portion of the demo? Sure. Let me share my desktop. Can you see saying airline performance? Sure can, yes. Okay, great. So I'm going to show you a little bit what you could do with the BI tool on that same data set that Heinz just showing you. In this case, it's an application made um, in ClickText ClickView BI product. Also within it, it is, um, has embedded in a mapping product um, from IDEVIO. Um, it's the same data, same structure as Heinz was just loading. Um, and it is, uh, it is the government Department of Transportation flight data. Uh, it's 154 million rows, um, everything from the past 27 years. I see here we've selected 1992. Let's pick a few more recent years of data. And um, by default, this is at California and Colorado. Let me pick something that will a little bit better on the map. Let's see. We'll add in Florida, Connecticut, I guess. So um, the ClickView formerly was an in-memory product, and then they turned it into a hybrid. So this stuff is all going down live to the database. And so what you're seeing here is the, the power and speed of an interactive in-memory application, but it's actually running on the sheer volume of big data that we have. Um, in, in this case, you're seeing that uh, the number of flights from California, Colorado, Connecticut to California or Colorado in the past few years, that the bulk of them were handled by SkyWest Airlines, Southwest Airlines, et cetera, 
I could break it down by airport. Um, there'll be a lot of airports, so I'm just scrolling off the bottom. You, you can't see it. Um, and uh, so this, this kind of tool, in the past, you couldn't do this kind of thing with big data. You could only do this with small data sets that could be held in memory. But this actually goes so far as to um, when you've, so you've picked your states. When you pick your airport, if you want to drill down to airports within your state, you see this list of airports. Some are white, and some, if I scroll down far enough, are gray. And what that means is um, the white ones are relevant to the states that I've picked, but the gray ones aren't. So, for instance, uh, I could pick Aberdeen, but it wouldn't make any sense because Aberdeen Airport is not within any of the states that I've already selected. So that's all determined real time um, by going to the underlying database. Hundreds of millions of records, no problem. Um, let's look at the delays. Um, the delays is the important part of this data set. So for these flights that I've picked for these years that I've picked, you can see that um, Modesto California, California Airport um, has the worst delays, uh, 17 minutes on average. Let's check it off the airline. SkyWest and ExpressJet and Virgin America, they've got not great um, delays there with eight or nine minutes on the average. Um, Let's go to maps so you can actually see this. Okay, so again, this is, this is being drawn in real time. All these numbers are real. Um, oops. Uh, I could pick a different state just to show you how fast this works. Let's go to Florida. Um, this map is, uh, this mapping element is, is the part that's created by IDEVIO, by the way. So it's all updated. It's in real time. Even the, even the selections are intelligent enough to guide you through picking sensible um, values based on the values you've already chosen. Um, it's a, sort of a hybrid of in memory and uh, pass, pass through queries. Um, and this tool is just one of many because since uh, Vertica it runs on standard SQL, has ODBC, JDBC connectors, uh, as well as other standard connectors and custom connectors for certain products. You can use pretty much any of the database tools that you are comfortable and familiar with, and they'll work just fine with Vertica. Um, with that, I will pass it back to Jeff. Well, Vanessa, thanks so much. Uh, it was a great demo. I know we're running up on the top of the hour here, and we want to provide enough time for question and answers, so let's get to that. I'm just going to buzz through a couple of slides here. So uh, the five steps to a modern data warehouse for big data analytics, hopefully we covered all of those five for you. Uh, please feel free to uh, ask more questions. Those that we don't get live will get offline. Uh, next slide. Okay, and I want to do a quick plug. Uh, we've gotten some questions as far as how you can get started. You can try out the HG Vertica Community Edition for free. It's uh, no time limit. It's for up to terabyte of data across three nodes. And then also request a free evaluation of a Tunity Replicate. At the URL. All right, let's get to the question and answers. So uh, we've gotten quite a few, and I want to thank you for that. Uh, I want to start off with Itamar. We've gotten a, we've gotten quite a few um, Itamar, so I'm going to line up a few for you if you're comfortable in answering these. And um, uh, one of them was, let's see, which version of Vertica is supported as well as other uh, types of data analytic platforms? Um, so that's uh, th th there's a lot of databases we support, so that can be that can be a while. I'm, um, um, happy to to share all the information offline, but uh, um, Vertica we support all the most recent versions uh, of Vertica. That's, uh, that's 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 certain. On the data sources side, uh, the most common ones we get asked about typically can can go through all of them right now. But uh, Oracle, where we support version 10 and higher, SQL Server, we support uh, uh, versions 2005 and higher. Those are the most common ones we get asked on, uh, DB2, uh, um, you know, um, Aiden Hire. Those are the most common ones, so um, uh, happy to answer more about others uh, offline by the time we have. Great. Thanks, Edmar. And then also this is a couple of questions in this one is, how is Attunity CDC tool different from something like Golden Gate CDC? That's a great question. We, we, we get it uh, pretty often because Golden Gate is known as a CDC uh, uh, product. Uh, Attunity is very different than Oracle Golden Gate in, uh, in a couple of ways, which uh, I want people to take away. First of all, for those of you familiar with, with Oracle Golden Gate, 
if you have seen our demo, that you already have seen one of the most important differences, which is the automation and ease of use. Um, Golden Gate can be pretty hard to, to set up. Um, you need to go through a lot of training to understand how to set it up. It's a pretty complex product. Uh, setting up a Trinity, as you've seen, is, is extremely easier compared to uh, Oracle Golden Gate. Uh, and in respect to automation, uh, we handle a lot of thing, things in heterogeneous environments that the Golden Gate doesn't handle, like the automated uh, metadata generation as well as automated metadata uh, updates between heterogeneous uh, databases, the full load, the synchronization of full load and, and CDC, a lot of automation and ease of use you get with the Trinity, um, uh, including, for example, the integrated monitoring and control that comes in the same product and not in a different product that uh, is first of all different, and then you also need to license separately. Uh, and then from a performance and integration perspective, Attunity provides unique performance optimizations for data warehousing, like TurboStream CDC, which Golden Gate doesn't do, and it's integrated with vertical, leveraging vertical's high-speed APIs. Uh, uh, with Golden Gate, for example, you can uh, source the CDC changes, but then you, what you'll get is basically files and you'll need to end up writing code to load those files into, into, into Vertica, into your data warehouse. Uh, and finally, one of the biggest differences is cost. Um, uh, Golden Gate is, cost, is, is licensed based on the number of cores on the source and your target. So uh, if you look at Vertica as your target and you're running a lot of cores on Vertica, then that, that will uh, scale up your price. And if you're adding cores, then your price will go up. Uh, with Attunity, your uh, list price is uh, fixed and does not change uh, as you scale up a vertical. So it's a big difference. So very quickly, some of the key differences between Attunity and Golden Gate. Yeah, that's great, Edmar. We're getting a lot of questions in here. Uh, another one is a little bit more technical, Edmar. I think this is you, though. It's, so we have to create the same tables and schema in a vertica before we start the ETL? That's a question. Mm -hmm. that's a, that's, yeah, that's a good question. Well, first of all, um, you don't have to. Um, so we have, we have customers that already have a schema in Vertica, so they want to map to an existing one. You can, of course, do that. But uh, if, you, if you want to, we will generate it for you. So you don't have to generate it. We can automatically generate it for you, which is part of the value proposition of using an automation platform uh, like Attunity that will automatically leverage the source metadata to automatically generate a schema for you in Vertica. That's what we did in the demo. The metadata exactly. the tables were created on the fly. Excellent. Another one um, for you guys. How do you overcome bandwidth challenges for a cloud deployment model? Um, th th very good question. We, we, we didn't get a chance to show it in the demo here today, but uh, Attunity provides different optimizations as, for data in transit. So when we optimize the process of moving data, we do optimizations in how, data, how we source the data from the source system. Uh, that's on the source side, then how we, the data moves in transit, and then also how we apply to the target like Vertica. So when the data moves in transit, we have two, two types of optimizations, one designed for LAN, uh, which we call in-memory you know, in streaming. So instead of lending data into intermediary files that I can just stream through memory and move much faster. However, when you work in, uh, to the question, when you, when you uh, work in a WAN or internet environment, um, we um, incorporate into Attunity Replicate uh, a very unique and high-performance um, uh, protocol that comes from another one of our product lines for file transfer. And that protocol um, is one of the best, the best of the world, in the world in moving uh, large amounts of data very efficiently over wide area networks. So in that case, we create something we call a file channel that takes the data and we buffer it through, through uh, chunks of files, and then we use a protocol that moves those files securely, uh, very efficiently, uh, over wide area network. So it does a whole slew of optimizations to maximize the utilization of the bandwidth that you have as well as reduce the uh, amount of data that actually flows. So anything from compression uh, to things like uh, chunking and multi-streaming uh, of the data with, uh, over wide area networks to achieve maximum uh, utilization and ensuring guaranteed the delivery of the data uh, automatically for you. So that's just at a very high level but we're happy to demonstrate that uh, offline. Okay. Thanks, Edmar. Uh, another question that we're getting across the board here is uh, around the topic ETL. Edmar, I think it would be helpful to, to provide a little bit of an example as far as, you know, how, we, how you guys handle ETL and how you compare against some of the other ETL vendors out there. 
Yeah, it's a, that, that's a very, very good question, and we typically get that question because when people understand they can use us to load a data warehouse, that's kind of what they, what they define as ETL. Um, so that, that's a very good question. The, the simplest answer is that a Trinity in some cases can be an alternative to an ETL, and in some cases a complement. Uh, you can use it alongside with, with your, with your uh, transformation uh, uh, engine. So the, the point being is that uh, Trinity is an automation platform where uh, an ETL is a development platform. In a traditional ETL software, um, everything you do is pretty much logic-based, and the people who use it tend to be ETL developers. Uh, so you need a developer skill set, and that typically creates a bottleneck. Now, for some type of, uh, work of um, activities that you do, like complex transformations, if you're doing complete uh, remodeling of your data, then yes, you need transformations, and ETL tools do a great job of doing heavy lifting transformations. But if what you're looking for is to do, uh, but however, at the same time, there's a lot of things you can do with a click of a button, which is what we enable with automation, like taking the E, the L, part of the T, and doing that completely automatically. So with the Trinity, you actually have a way to modernize your data warehouse environment. So a lot of the things that you previously used to do with an ETL and require for which you require a developer, you can now do with a click of a button, leveraging your administrators, your DBAs, so you can get a lot of stuff done much faster. You can get more data into your data warehouse and make it ready uh, with significantly less resources. You can use your developers in a more effective way. So again, coming back to the difference between a Trinity and traditional ETL, traditional ETL is a development platform. Uh, and Attunity is an automation platform for loading uh, data. Um, Attunity kind of came from data replication and extended into uh, automating and optimizing data loading uh, for data warehousing, whereas ETL came from the world of transformations. So that's kind of the main, main difference. So you have a different uh, in objective. Uh, there's also a big difference in cost between Attunity and ETLs, both uh, in terms of uh, licensing costs that are uh, Attunity's uh, more affordable than ETL products, and then um, um, much less labor uh, for opportunity compared to ETL because there's, there's no development project around it. Great, thanks, Edward. Uh, I think that I think that when you ask this question, the, the simple answer I can give is: uh, as you think about modernizing, automate where you can and develop only where you must. Yeah, that's a, that's a good summary. Uh, thanks, Edward. We got some questions as far as how you can evaluate. So. Can Vertica be downloaded? Yes, there's a community, uh, Vertica Community Edition you can download from our site. Uh, we cover that one. There's also a lot of questions here, and I know we're running over around Click, uh, Click Tech. So, um, you know, ClickView is a, uh, is a separate company. You know, they're not part of HP uh, or Attunity, but we do integrate very closely with them. Uh, but, Miles, a question for you. There was, a, there was a question as far as the underlying uh, infrastructure there as far as using Click. Was it accessing the data directly from Vertica? Maybe you can provide a little bit around the background of the underlying technology underneath that dashboard. Can you cover that one? Sure. Um, so what happens is um, when you launch Click, it pulls the dimensions into those drop-down fields and tries to make associations. And then when you um, – and those are for the, the, the dimension fields. And then as you, as you choose them, as you click on the years, the airports, or whatever you want, it um, submits a query down to Vertica in real time and takes the results back and does all the updating, redrawing of the graphs and the screens and associations at that time. Um, so the, the dimensions, those drop-downs, are held in RAM, but, but all the data that you're seeing represented on the graphs is, no, that was fetched right then when we did the click. Great, perfect. Okay, guys, I think we're, we're five minutes over the hour here. Uh, we're getting a lot of questions coming in, which is great. Uh, what we'll do is we'll capture these, and we'll work with Aaron to answer these offline. But I want to thank everyone, our presenters, for uh, presenting the demo. It was great. But I want to thank everyone on the call for their interest, and we'd love to have further uh, discussions with each and every one of you.